Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some other really exciting discoveries coming from the Milky Way galaxy, and actually discoveries that once again nobody kind of expected. Discoveries that you can learn more about in one of the papers in the description below. But also a discovery that's in some sense almost like 45 years in the making, because the scientists behind this main paper has been studying this particular phenomena since the early 1980s. And it's essentially directly related to that discovery from the 80s of these unusual floating filaments discovered around the galactic center. If you want to take a trip back in time, here's that original paper by the same scientist published 39 years ago. And so back then he discovered these unusual filamental formations that were basically only visible in radio light. And quick reminder, if you actually want to ever see what the galaxy looks like in the radio light, check out the map in the description that allows you to see everything in the X-rays, in the gamma rays, in the infrared light, microwave light, and lastly, radio light. And so when looking at the Milky Way in the radio light, something exceptional comes into view pretty quickly. Our galaxy contains a lot of these very beautiful filamental features, very often up to 150 light years in length, vertical in orientation, and most likely following the magnetic lines of the galaxy itself. And the scientists behind this paper discovered over a thousand of these in the last four decades. As a matter of fact, we've discussed many of these discoveries in the past because they do show our galaxy in a very different light, and serve as evidence for magnetic interactions within the galaxy and powerful magnetic lines that most likely influence various star formation and also guide a lot of gas around the galaxy. But these previous discoveries were usually magnetic in nature and almost always vertical and also mostly served as a direct proof of other observations from similar galaxies, especially with the famous Sophia telescope, that directly show us various magnetic fields and magnetic lines visible in many of these galaxies as well. And a lot of these formations always have these filaments and these beautiful line-like formations that seem to follow magnetic structures in each of these galaxies. So basically this was a kind of an indirect proof of the existence of powerful magnetic fields within each of these galaxies, including the Milky Way. It was never really doubted, but this was a direct proof. But this time, the same scientists, using very similar techniques, but obviously using new improved telescopes, discovered something that even they did not expect. Mystery filaments align in a very different way, almost always along the galactic plane as opposed to vertical to it. And interestingly enough, almost always, pointing toward the center, which was very different from previous observations from previous filaments. And here's actually what all of this looks like if you were to combine both. And more intriguingly, implying that there seem to be at least two different populations of these filamental strings, and possibly with two different origins, with this new discovery almost certainly connected to the central black hole Sagittarius A star. Because unlike other filaments, it seems that these ones are aligned in a way that they kind of point in the direction of the central black hole. And though they're also magnetized and are only visible in radio light, they are different in properties as well. So for example, these previous filaments that do seem to be kind of random and don't really have any connection with one another are definitely different from these ones, which all seem to be tied to the center of the galaxy. And even the scientists behind this paper were actually surprised to find them because they expected all of them to be vertical following the magnetic lines. But unlike these vertical filaments, these new structures are pretty much just short lines. Most of them are only about 5 to 10 light years in length, but there are like hundreds of them all pointing in the same direction. And although all of them are magnetic in nature, the long structures, the vertical ones, can usually easily accelerate particles to near the speed of light. But these tiny horizontal structures do not. Instead, they seem to emit thermal energy. And more importantly, they're not equally distributed across the galaxy. For some reason, a lot of these newly discovered filaments are mostly arranged on one of the sides of the galactic center, almost as if they're pointing at the radio outflow from the previously active astrophysical jets. The jets that we believe must have been active a few million years ago based on various observations, but that are no longer active now. And more importantly, if you actually trace back when these particular emissions must have started, it seems to have happened approximately 6 million years ago. Which in essence implies that approximately 6 million years ago, something must have formed all of these powerful emissions 
that eventually produced all these tiny magnetic lines coming from the center of the galaxy. Which of course implies that our galaxy was probably very active 6 million years ago, emitting very powerful emissions in the process, producing powerful accretion disks and a lot of other electromagnetic effects, and also producing powerful jets that then left behind these unusual filaments. And if this assumption is correct, it actually means that we can now potentially study the accretion disk of the ancient Sagittarius A star. By studying each of these filaments, it might become possible to work out the black hole spin, the size and the power of the accretion disk 6 million years ago, obviously the orientation of the black hole and the accretion disk, and possibly even what exactly caused all of this. And then maybe even work out if this had any effects on planet Earth. It would also be quite important to find the connection between this and the famous Fermi bubbles, although in this case, the Fermi bubbles are believed to have been formed possibly about 2 to 3 million years ago, so there is definitely a bit of a time difference. And though these events might be connected, there is also a possibility that maybe these were two separate events, suggesting that our black hole does this every few million years or so. It basically becomes active, starts spewing out a lot of matter from every direction, creates powerful accretion disks, powerful jets, and leaves behind powerful radio filaments visible from very far away. At least that's one of the first assumptions. The other assumption could be maybe a little bit different. It's also related to a recent study on the so-called Erosita bubbles, very similar bubbles but only visible in the X-rays that are much bigger, much more powerful, and seem to have been a result of a major star formation in the galactic center and not the activity from the black hole. And so for all we know, maybe these bubbles produced various powerful emissions because of various supernova all happening at once, which then, as they spread away from the center of the galaxy, produced these radio filaments now visible as the formations that the scientists recently discovered. In other words, the actual origin of this is still not really clear. It was definitely a result of something very powerful and something involving a lot of magnetic interaction, but whether it was star formation, black hole emissions, or something entirely different we don't understand just yet, is a question we cannot answer yet either. But it's definitely something we might be able to answer because of all of these new observations and all of these very powerful telescopes, such as the Meerkat radio telescope that discovered these new formations, that in the next years might help us answer more of these questions about what exactly happened in the Milky Way a few million years ago, and I guess more importantly, if it had any effect on planet Earth. The answer to this for now is most likely no, but that's kind of the question I would like to be answered at some point in the future. And once there is some kind of an answer, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, check out all of the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.